the true nature of the soul through near-death experiences. Welcome to the Eye of Truth. In our dreams, we often encounter strange and illogical occurrences such as flying, instant teleportation, or speaking with deceased loved ones. These events may seem normal within the context of the dream, as we tend to believe the dream world is reality and the events happening there are genuine. However, upon waking, we realize that these experiences were simply a product of our imagination. Studies have shown that genetic mutations can be caused by changes in human emotions. However, it appears that emotional changes experienced in dreams can also lead to genetic mutations. This suggests that while our physical body recognizes that the dream world is not real, our conscious mind perceives it as an alternate reality. So, what is the relationship between the dream world and near-death experiences? While the world experienced during a near-death experience may be more realistic and mysterious than the alternate reality of a dream, both can provide insights into the nature of human consciousness or the soul. In this video, I will discuss near-death experiences from a scientific perspective without any religious bias. Sam Parnia is a physician and associate professor at the New York University Medical Center. As an emergency medicine specialist, he has witnessed numerous near-death experiences in his patients. A near-death experience is a state in which a person experiences severe symptoms such as cardiac arrest due to illness or injury. Some individuals who recover from near-death experiences have reported strange visions and events occurring during their unconsciousness. These strange experiences are referred to as near-death experiences. Professor Parnia has published several papers on near-death experiences. Now, let's delve into these papers and examine the characteristics that define near-death experiences. One element often reported in near-death experiences is an out-of-body state in which a person's consciousness separates from their physical body. Many individuals who have had near-death experiences have reported this sensation. Patients claim that while in an out-of-body state, they were able to observe themselves and their surroundings from a distance, or even view the earth from above. It is generally thought that out-of-body experiences are simply hallucinations. However, some patients who regain consciousness after a cardiac arrest have been able to accurately describe the faces of doctors and nurses who were in another room, or the shapes and colors of objects on the ceiling of the room. This suggests that out-of-body experiences are not just hallucinations, but that a person's consciousness can perceive the environment without relying on their physical senses. Another common element of near-death experiences is the appearance of deceased loved ones. Some patients have reported seeing and interacting with deceased relatives in their near-death experiences, describing the encounters as warm and calming. The third component of near-death experiences is a feeling of confusion. As the body is in a dying state, but consciousness is gradually revived, individuals may experience confusion about their identity, location, and circumstances. They may ask themselves, who am I? Where am I? What is happening during the experience? The fourth element of near-death experiences is an increased sense of freedom. After recovering from a near-death state, patients often report feeling a freedom that they have never before experienced. While they may not be able to fully describe this feeling, many say that it is a sensation they will never forget. There are also reports of a sense of relief and the feeling of being enveloped in a warm light. So far, we have discussed the most common elements of near-death experiences. However, something that particularly caught my attention was the following statement. The world I experienced during my near-death experience was more real than the real world and the sensations I felt were even more intense than usual. It was like the difference between the real world and a dream. This suggests that the world we perceive as real may be more akin to a dream, while the world experienced during a near-death experience is more like true reality. In fact, some individuals have reported that near-death experiences have allowed them to comprehend complex ideas that were previously difficult to grasp. Why does this occur? While this is not yet scientifically proven, my understanding is that we have three levels of consciousness, the dream world, the real world, and the near-death experience world. In dreams, 
our level of consciousness is at its thinnest and weakest, making it difficult to think logically and perceive clearly. In the real world, our level of consciousness is higher and allows for clearer thought and perception. In the world of near-death experiences, the level of consciousness increases even further, allowing for the possibility of experiences and actions that cannot be achieved in the real world. But what causes these differences in levels of consciousness? That is the central question we will explore today. What is human consciousness? What happens to consciousness after death? Do we have souls? Let's seek answers to these questions. Physicist Roger Penrose, who won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on black holes, proposes a theory called quantum soul theory. This theory suggests that no matter how advanced artificial intelligence becomes, it will never be able to surpass human consciousness or soul because artificial intelligence relies on mechanical computation, while human consciousness is the result of the workings of quanta. Penrose believes that there are many entangled electrons in the human brain that go through a cycle of collapse, return to a state of quantum entanglement, collapse again, and return to quantum entanglement once more. When collapse occurs, it leads to specific thoughts or feelings in humans. According to quantum soul theory, after a person dies, their consciousness continues to exist in a quantum form, leaving the physical body at the time of death and returning to some place in the universe. As you can see, the concept of consciousness in quantum soul theory is similar to the popular notion of the soul. Penrose also explained why near-death experiences occur. According to the theory, the ability of consciousness to exist in a quantum state is due to the presence of microtubules with a diameter of approximately 25 nanometers in the nerve cells of the brain. These structures may allow for the quantum phenomena of superposition of states and quantum entanglement. Let's unpack these terms starting with superposition of states. As I have mentioned in previous videos, quantum particles can exist in multiple states simultaneously. For example, it can simultaneously rotate to the right and left and also be at location A and location B at the same time. This mysterious phenomenon is known as superposition of states. Now consider human consciousness, which can simultaneously hold multiple thoughts and emotions. Isn't this similar to quantum superposition of states? Now let's discuss quantum entanglement. According to quantum soul theory, when a person dies and the brain and microtubules cease to function, their consciousness still exists. This is because of quantum entanglement. But what is quantum entanglement? It is a phenomenon in which two quantum particles, even if separated by 100 million light years, always share a common state. For example, if one particle located 100 million light years away from Earth rotates clockwise, the other on Earth instantly rotates counterclockwise. These particles appear to be connected by an invisible string. In relation to consciousness or the soul, human consciousness, which exists in a quantum state, is entangled with a conscious entity that exists somewhere in the universe. They are connected by this invisible string. When a person dies and the brain stops functioning, the consciousness that was in the human brain appears to disappear, but the consciousness of the cosmic side does not. This means that the person's consciousness still exists even after death. This also explains why people experience strange things during near-death experiences. As the physical body is dying and the brain ceases to function, human consciousness separates from the physical body and returns to some location in the universe. However, when the body is revived from its dying state, the consciousness on the human side returns to the body, and the events that the consciousness experienced during the dying state are remembered as near-death experiences. In this way, Penrose believes that after a person dies, consciousness does not disappear but returns to the universe. While this theory has been met with skepticism from some researchers due to its dramatic nature, even though it is proposed by a Nobel laureate, I believe we will be able to determine its accuracy in the distant future, when quantum mechanics and biology are more advanced than they are currently. However, I don't know if we'll still be alive when that day comes, so I'd like to share my own perspective on the soul here. Do souls exist? Personally, I believe they do. 
Penrose's theory suggests that a person's consciousness does not simply disappear upon death, but returns somewhere in the universe. I believe the key phrase here is, somewhere in the universe. From current mathematical calculations, we know that our world exists in up to 11 dimensions. In relation to the soul, the essence of our soul can be thought of as something that is projected onto this three-dimensional world from higher dimensions. In other words, we are composed of a physical body that exists in three-dimensional space and consciousness that exists in a four-dimensional space, one level higher. The consciousness on the human side and the consciousness in the fourth dimension are connected by an invisible string through quantum entanglement. When a person dies, the place where the human consciousness of our reality returns is not somewhere in this three-dimensional universe, but in the fourth dimension. Similarly, the consciousness that exists in the fourth dimension is also a projection of something that exists in the fifth dimension. Going back in this way, all things are projections of what exists in the eleventh dimension. If what exists in the eleventh dimension is our true form, you may wonder why our bodies would bother to project to lower dimensions. In my opinion, the projection to lower dimensions is not a deliberate act, but a natural occurrence. When we are illuminated by the sun, our shadow is naturally projected onto the ground. It is an inevitable law of the universe. I believe the projection of consciousness is similar. With this theory in mind, mysterious phenomena such as near-death experiences, souls, and reincarnation can be explained. In other words, for humans, Death marks the end of the physical body, but the consciousness may begin a new journey from that point. The feeling of relief and relaxation that is commonly reported by people who have had near-death experiences may be a reflection of their consciousness returning to its proper place. Of course, this is just my personal speculation. Please share your thoughts on the concept of the soul in the comments. Thank you for watching.